Today we're taking this 256GB, 3 and installing a 1TB solid state drive inside it. This should be fun. Hopefully I don't break it. So, we've got a bunch of screws that we need to get to. Uh, luckily I've got a whole kitten caboodle of different size screw or bits that hopefully will fit with the comma 3. Um, I'm going to have to pay good attention to this lens and hopefully I don't damage it in this process. Alright, so let's just start digging into it. Alright. Get these side ones first, that's too big. Um, let's see, this is kind of too big as well. These are pretty small screws. A little wiggly, but a good candidate. So let's keep that guy right there. Better. Okay. Awesome. So this is going to be the one we'll use for the big screws. Let me see if I can grab what size it is. So it says S2 uh, H1.5, whatever that means. But that's what it is. And then we got these little tiny ones right here, so that's too big. Uh, maybe it's this guy right here. Ooh, actually, this is like a little star pattern. I don't think that's a, I think it's still a hex. Definitely still a hex. All right, uh, how small are my hexes here? We got some pretty darn small ones here. Let's see if this guy fits. A little loose. A slightly bigger. This one's too big. Maybe I'd switch these around though. That's too small. Alright, so oopsies. This guy does fit, but it's a little wiggly. This is a uh, an S2 T5. Torques, I'm assuming. Let's see. This, this other kit has a bunch more on this other side. Maybe one of these will fit. This is a P5 1.2. I don't know what P means. But let's see. That's also too, also too small. Too big. Alright, alright, let's see. We've got these other sizes here. This is a S2T5. I'm assuming T stands for Torx. This one also wiggles. Oh, actually, these two are the same size, okay. And the, the one bigger than that is too big. Yeah. So I think that our best bet is going to be that S2 T5. This this H1.5 is too big. This is an H1.3. Maybe it's this one. It does feel pretty good. Okay. So we've got options. We've got this H1.3 and this S2T5. Uh, this guy here. I got some thermal paste on my fingers. S2T5. I think it's worth a try. Alright. No screws in that area. Alright, let's give this a go. I'm going to start off with the large screws in the corners here. 
Okay. Wish me luck. I'll just place my screws on the top case here. Alright. So, screw number one. Just put it right there, a little magnet so that should hold them in place. Really paranoid about this fish eye lens here. Yep, got that third screw. Let me see if I can fish out this fourth one. It's just kind of hanging out in this hole. I'm not wanting to stay with my screw. This is not enough magnets inside here. So, oh, there it goes. Perfect. All right. So we got one, two, three, four screws out. Ooh, we got this little guy in the middle here right by the top mount. All right, and it was also the same size as the previous screws. It's not wanting to come out with the screwdriver, no big deal. All right, so now we shall try rocking the H 1.3 for these two little guys here. Alright, hopefully I don't strip them. And that did not catch. Hmm. Well, we have better luck with the S2 T5. Okay, we've got some rotation. Little tiny screws. Kind of odd to use such a, a small head for a screw that's kind of a substantial size. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna put that guy there. And be very gentle with this one since the last one. Okay, wow, they put some decent torque to that one considering it's such a small screw. Gotta pay attention to that on the reassembly. Alright, so we've got these two screws and they are the same length. Great, so I don't have to worry about uh, which side they go on. And this should now come off easy peasy. And it's not coming off easy peasy. Am I missing a screw? I don't believe I am, unless there's some sort of latch that I'm not quite seeing. So I can give this opportunity to take out this top mount screw. It's kind of being captured in that hole. No. Okay, so curious now, is there a latch of some sort that's uh, stopping me from just lifting this clamshell off. Ooh, very interesting that the camera is attached to the... Oh yeah, it is. I'm wondering if I can maybe bring him this way. And just kind of jimmy this guy out really slowly. Unless there is a hinge on this side. Okay, oh, there is some sort of hinge. Okay. All right, so I do see the solid state drive. Um, not sure if it's going to be in focus, but uh, you can check out how the ribbon is inside here. I'm not sure if the lights will catch it. Um, but there is a small ribbon in there. Um, let me grab my little 
plastic flathead. See if I can pry that ribbon cable off. I'll be right back. I swear I remembered someone was able to work with the comma 3 by not having to or not needing to take off the or just keeping the cable on. I just have to bear with me. Okay. So there was like a lip or something keeping that together. Um, and it looks like I should be, yep, should be able to just kind of let it rest right there. All right. I was out on camera, that's fine. All right. So there is the 250, or 250 gigabyte uh, solid state drive and all I'm going to be doing right now is just replacing it with this one terabyte drive. All right, I might be able to actually put this little guy this way, give you all a better view, I think. Yeah, I think that works. Kind of sketchy, but I think we're good. That's actually really sketchy. Curious now, am I? able to unlatch this guy with my fingernail. There you go. Perfect. Just to remember that it was that way. Great. All right. So this is the uh, the OLED screen. It's all injection molded. Gee, there was no latch. It must have been just a tight fit keeping this guy in there. But for the most part, they've got some heat inserts there. Just a plain old injection molded part. I'm assuming they put adhesive to put the actual screen. Cool. And just put this guy down over here. And start tackling the solid drive. A part of me is curious to check it out inside. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything keeping the... No, there is not. So we just got this clamshell here. Um, very interesting. I don't know what this thing is here. I'll have to check that out. It says Circus 3851, but hmm, I wonder if it's just shielding. But this is essentially the comma three. Yeah, they got a really tiny fan on there. Really tiny. Like a 40 mil. Still got some uh, 3D printed parts there. Very interesting. Got some shielding on this uh, driver monitor camera. I'm assuming this is some sort of antenna or some sort. Yeah, not much going on. Wow. Cool. I'm just going to just slip it back on so that I can. Kind of lay it on its back. Just don't want to hit that fish eye. All right, so that's back in there. And changing out the solid state drive should be pretty uneventful. Just a normal solid state that you would see in computers and laptops. So, I'm gonna take this. Guy out of here. All 
Alright. Not magnetic. Place that on one of the magnets there. And then the SSD just slides right. I don't know why I'm being so careful. I just throw these into laptops all the time, but I think it's because this was a $2,400 dev kit, and so I'm kind of a little scared, but yeah, this is the uh, stock solid state drive. Just put them right over here. All right, let's open up this uh, one terabyte drive. All right, now let's use proper tools. Let me get a blade. So, this is a new hard drive, or a solid state drive, one terabyte, same form factor as the uh, 250 gig, yeah, so it's the uh, 980 Samsung, and yeah, it should just go in like any other solid state drive. Slip that in, grab my screw, and should be good. Yeah, some of y'all might be wondering why I'm uh, upgrading the solid state drive. And it's mainly just for fun and exploration. I know that um, the one terabyte cross country edition that you get from Kama, the only real advantage is that um, it can record a lot more footage so if you're doing a lot of driving uh, you're able to just capture a lot more uh, that, has, that it will be very important since we are recording data from three cameras inside and so that does take up a lot of space so um, if you are going to be doing if you are going to be reviewing your footage a uh, bigger drive it's going to be beneficial if you're doing longer drives so um, that's kind of it I wonder if I want to do any more digging around, but I kind of don't because I'm a little scared to be honest. And I'm also just curious to see if uh, simply switching out the hard drive is just all I need to do. Because um, I may find out that I actually can't just simply switch it out and I'll need to put in the old one to figure out what is different about uh, the one terabyte drive. Uh, this is the connector that I have to place back on there. and. Hopefully I do that properly. Alright, and I should just press right in. I've dealt with these before taking apart like my iPhone and my Android phones. And it should not be that different for this device considering this is still in its heart a mobile phone. CPU and system. All right, so that's in. Let me grab my screwdriver and I'm going to leave these little guys last. Um, I don't really want to be torquing down the clamshell and relying on that really small uh, bolt head for that for that screw size. So I'm going to start off with this corner here. I'm not going to over tighten it, just kind of get some tension there. And I'll do a crisscross pattern because why not? There you 
go, not too tight. I'll, I'll go back and uh, give it like a little smidge of torque. All right, so that's good. And give that little another smidge. This middle guy also needs to be tightened. I'm gonna give that a little smidge of torque. Just using like my my fingers to torque because I those heat inserts were pretty small and not much material where the heat insert was placed, so very doubtful of how much torque they can take. Alright, so now I'm gonna do these last little guys. I'm gonna drop that there. And also drop this here. Alright, so be very careful with this one. I'm actually gonna put some like slight pressure on the clamshell just so that I'm not relying on uh, myself turning the screw head to get those screws tightened. So in essence I'm essentially pressing down on it so that I'm not having to fight the clamshell while I'm trying to turn the screws because uh, I, I mean, it's likely that this is not the right screw head so um, I, do, I am risking uh, stripping out this little bolt uh, if I am putting tons of torque on there and I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let me get a, a power adapter to see if uh, this thing still boots. So give me one second. All right, I'm back. So, uh, one thing I wanted to bring out, um, or bring up, one thing I wanted to bring up was the fact that you can now use USB-C to USB-C adapters for the Comma 3. So in the past, uh, if you needed to power your Comma 2 on, it, you always needed to use a USB-A to USB-C. But now that this is a different board, they're able to actually power the device on using a plain and simple uh, USB-C to USB-C adapter. I did find that, um, so this is a MacBook Pro adapter. Uh, I was not able to get the same results when I used um, the iPad adapter. So I, I think the, the, this power adapter for the MacBook Pro uh, I think it handles voltages better, or uh, that's my assumption, so uh, I could only get it to work with the MacBook Pro adapter. Alright, so here's the moment of truth. Will this still turn on? Alright, plugging it in. Got the comma symbol. I wouldn't be surprised if I have to actually um, reformat or 
go into a recovery mode for this system now that I've installed the the new solid state. Um, if that's going to be the case, I do have to actually run to my laptop. Oh, it is booting up. I might have to run to my laptop to figure out how to do that because I know that um, like there's no physical buttons on the Comma 3, and so to initiate like a recovery mode. Uh, it is a matter of like tapping on the right area of the screen, but um, we are good.